All right, let's bring in Michael Jaffer. Uh, th there's always emotion in courtrooms, and uh, it can switch like that, and that's a perfect example. Oh, absolutely. Here, here's the best. So, yesterday I was trying to get some work done, and a bunch of buddies of mine started sending me a link to a video, and I, I, I rarely open it because I get links to videos by my friends all the time, and a lot of them were saying, same one. So I looked at it. I looked at it. This is this real, right? I couldn't believe what I was looking at. Um, and it's actually funny because he was telling her how he's turned his life around. Then he flew on her like a bat and he uh, strangled her. What people don't understand, and this brought me back memories from my public defender days. I stood next to a bunch of petty criminals, a bunch of people who were accused of doing a bunch of stuff, uh, street criminals, just the, the lowest scum of society. And so this is the, the profile of the people that public defenders would stand next to, right? What people also want to understand is why did he do that? Why did he, why was he so enraged at that judge? He obviously has a temper problem, but here's why. He was on probation. When you're on probation for some sort of a petty crime, that judge owns you for the length of the probation, sometimes up to two years for a misdemeanor, up to five years for a felony. So obviously he has history with this judge. He obviously was trying to tell her why he was getting his life back in, uh, on, in order, but he violated his probation. Usually you violate your probation by doing a random drug test uh, and then you, you fail the drug test. So on the probation, the judge will tell you no alcohol, no, no marijuana, no, no drugs for two years. And people have a hard time and people go through withdrawal. And so this guy violated his probation that he knows the judge owns him. He knew how to talk to the judge. He thought he was swaying her. He thought he was serenading her with with his new life and his new job and his new career and I'm gonna get a job and the judge just said one thing to him I think it's time you get a taste of something different that's a that's a continuation of what she's told him months ago where she told him if you get your life in order you can be free I won't put you in jail so when she told him I think it's time you get a taste of something different I cringed and laughed and I knew what it meant but he knew what it meant so he jumped on her he said hey if I'm gonna go to jail I might as well just take my temper problem and, you know, just kind of give her a piece of my mind. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. It's, it's, it's actually very comical. Yeah, and I like how you phrased it. He went after her like a bat. Well, it was like he yeah. just kind of flew out of nowhere. So unexpected. You know, Michael, he violated probation. Judges take that very seriously. But when we just even talk, talk about sentencing in general, judges kind of are in a tough spot. Here you have the state. Easy. Prosecutors. We want the stiffest penalty possible. Defense counsel want the most lenient uh, penalty but then the judge has to make that ultimate decision here obviously he violated probation he wanted to continue on what he was doing she said you need to get a different taste try something different and then this is what happened so judges aren't always in the best position here yeah no they're not um they're not at all and especially judges uh, you know sentencing judges for petty crimes and misdemeanors so you'll rarely see a, a camera in the courtroom of a judge like that right because their job is so it's so it's so it's so like icky it's dirty like you're deal every single crime you're dealing with is drunk driving assault and battery domestic violence under a certain amount or some sort of a possession crime right that's it Traffic tickets, right? Traffic tickets, you know, moving violations. You spend all day, you saw her courtroom pack. Those people were waiting to be sentenced on a traffic ticket or have a traffic ticket dismissed. She had a packed courtroom. Those were not observers. Those were actual defendants. And they were waiting for their time to go in front of the judge. And she was probably, she judges like her sentenced 20 to 30 people a block, two blocks a day, five days a week. So they sent us 30, 50, 60, 70 people a day on petty crimes, right? Probation violations, right? And this guy's probation violation was on something very petty. And he was a repeat offender. And he's he, he thought he knew he could serenade that judge because he's done it before. She's let him go before. This judge has let this man walk many times before because what else is she gonna do? You're right, Kelly, like they're just sitting there and they just, they're dealing with these members of society all week long and so yeah it's it's uh there you're right the prosecutor is always going to want the stiffest penalty and the defense his his attorney was saying let him let him walk free i remember one time i was on a sentencing on a person where the judge actually agreed to let him go on probation and my client told the judge you know what judge i need help i would like you to sentence me to the maximum penalty i'll mm -hmm. never forget this person i want you to sentence me to the maximum penalty because i tried to kill myself i have a drug abuse problem 
I think I should go to jail. And the judge threw his hands up after agreeing with me to send my guy out on probation, and he sentenced him to the to the maximum prison uh, sentence, right? That's what these judges have to deal with every single day. Hmm. And it can be very dangerous. And we've seen incidents uh, over the past few years of uh, judges